There it is. There it is. There's that bear hug. He's got that bear hug, Charlie. There's no getting out of that. Terry the Hulk Boulder. With a bear hug on the outlaw. I believe the outlaw is, is out. That is it. GWH TV, bringing you classic wrestling action sanctioned by the Georgia Wrestling History Network. Hi there, folks. Welcome to GWH TV. I am Brother Joe. Alongside me, Brother John Cannon and Brother Stevie J. You just saw, we just saw, Terry Boulder, a.k.a. the immortal Hulk Hogan, but but more on that later. Brother John, we have a wide variety of superstars lined up this week, and we also have none other than, did somebody say, wildfire, Tommy Rich. That's right, Joe. We've got exciting stars and exciting matches from the legends of professional wrestling. From 1981, Tommy Rich defends the Georgia heavyweight title against none other than the Mongolian Stomper, but also in the ring this week, we got Blackjack Mulligan Jr., Cowboy Young, the team of Bobby Eaton and Togo, Mike Jackson, and many more, Stevie. That's right, Stoney. Each week, we will be capturing the legends of yesterday and covering the stars of today and tomorrow. This week, hang with us as we travel back to the classic days of wrestling in Georgia and the Carolinas and the surrounding Southeastern territories. Now, at the top of the program, you saw the immortal Hulk Hogan, Terry Boulder, long before Hulkamania ever even thought about running wild. In fact, that match was so old, that was before Thunderlips the Ultimate Male ever ran wild on Rocky Balboa at a charity at the Philadelphia Spectrum in 1981. Or was it two? I I digress. Speaking of Hulk Hogan, however, we would like to send the fondest birthday wishes to the immortal one. And um, in our opening bout, we have Hulk Hogan, Terry Boulder, taking on Mongolia's favorite son and grappler, the Mongolian Stomper. Let's go to the ring. And here's a situation of, if we can go ahead and, uh, and roll the tape, let's take a look at it right now because it's an illustration of uh, what your intention was. Now, right now, of course, the Mongolian Stomper is... Uh, you bet you keep one thing in mind. That big Hulk is 300 pounds. He stands six foot seven. And did you see the eighth wonder wailing on him? Right now, the eighth wonder is in Hulk heaven. He loves to have that big Palooka beat on him. He loves to do things like that. He loves to have things like that done to him because it just gets him mad. He gets mad and he wants to tear people apart. And I'll tell you what, you'll see here in a minute, that Jerry Lawler, he has been a thorn in everybody's back for so long, especially in mine. I'll tell you, you know the big guy with the big muscles yeah, that just yeah. left out of here? What yeah. was his name Austin again? Austin Idol. Austin Idol. How could I ever forget the universal heartthrob? He couldn't get the job done. He couldn't put Lawler out of commission. He couldn't take care of that king self-proclaimed individual. But I got somebody that will take care of him. You betcha. I got the eighth wonder of the world will take care of that. Well, let's take a listen to the action as it happened right uh, at the time of the bout. Free trying to break up the stomper as he pounds his head on the turnbuckle. from the Hulk. Drops with that leg. And the eighth 
Wonder goes off on the concrete floor. Mongolia and Stauber right down in front of the timer's table, climbing up an unusual position for him. Rarely have you ever seen him down on the floor like that. This huge opponent he has. Terry Boulder comes roaring at him. Whip. He uses the foot all the way up in the face. Knee. Drops on him. Drop on the Mongolian stomper. Big elbow. And the stomper goes for the eyes. but sheer power. Not much in the way of scientific wrestling. And the Hulk drops him over. That knee and picks him up. Goes with a bear hug. situation we wanted to see the entire thing I saw you up there he turned and grabbed you yeah I tell you what he was trying to maim my eighth wonder he was trying to break his legs he's a maniac he's insane he needs to be in a mental institution he don't need to be in the ring he's been crushing people hurting people he's just he's got me half crazy I have to settle myself down the eighth wonder grabbed me the other day, and he says, settle down, gorgeous. He says, we'll take care of it. I'll hurt him. I'll hurt him bad. That's what needs to be done. You bet you crush that big slob. He needs to be in the nut house. You know what? They need to put the white jacket on him. They need to handcuff him. And there he is. There that Pillsbury Doughboy is. The king, Jerry Lawler, the hamburger king, that's who he is. He's trying to hurt me. Well, hurt him, eighth wonder. That's it. Crush that skull. That beady brains punk. Hurt that fool. And I'll tell you what. Nobody got the job done before when they tried to hurt the doughboy. Nobody got it done, but I'm going to get it done today. Okay. Once again, we here at GWH TV would like to wish a happy birthday to the one and only Terry Bolea. However, guys, the incredible Hulk Hogan, Thunderlips, is not the only one celebrating a birthday today. Another master of the leg drop is also celebrating his, and this one likes to throw his leg drop from the top turnbuckle, and I'm talking about none other than the Alabama Jam, one half of the Midnight Express, beautiful Bobby Eaton. Well, you know, after the Midnight Express in the 90s, during the Monday Night Wars, Bobby Eaton was a solo competitor. But the odd part is, is years, years before the Midnight Express took on the Rock and Roll Express, Steve, 
He was also a solo competitor in the Tennessee area, but he also uh, tag-teamed with some few people. Full circle. Yes. That's right. Now let's go to the ring for this match from his days in Tennessee. Bobby Eaton teams up with Togo for tag mat action. Let's take it to the ring. We're going Bobby Eaton now. Bobby Eaton and the great Togo. So we're going to have them in action against Gary Ellis and Tony Perkins. Oh, look at that. Uh, boy, we're gonna, <laughs> this ought to be a free-for-all. Probably will be. Perkins taking off his blouse. Perkins starting against young Bobby Eaton from Huntsville, Alabama. <clears throat> Perkins is a big fellow, as you can see. For some reason, Bobby says, make him move away. I don't know what. Seems a little reluctant. Look out, boy, Perkins bounced him like a rubber ball. Maybe that's why Eaton wasn't too uh, happy to get to close quarters with him. Claiming hair pulling. Eaton claims that Perkins pulled his hair, which is not true. Look at this. Got in high. Perkins made a great mistake there. He turned around. The Japanese wrestler, the great Togo, got his attention. He turned his back on Bobby Eaton. That was a big mistake. And Eaton came on from behind and really lowered the boom on it. Never take your attention from your opponent. Now Perkins and then Mr. Togo, who is a big man, or the great Togo, whichever you want to call him. But he's in there against the big man himself and Tony Perkins. Back into the rope. You can hear that uh, judo pop. The body, they're really, there's no place for little boys in there right now. Eaton is back in. Bobby Eaton working on Perkins. Gary Ellis has not been in uh, yet, but I have a feeling he's gonna come in very shortly. one way or another. He did a little hair pulling, apparently the fans say he did. I looked, I was watching uh, some other action in the ring and missed part of it. That's uh, when action is wild, there's so much going on, it's hard to see it all. Yeah, I saw that, hair pulled him. Eating hollering, how you like that, Harry Thornton? that hair pulling. Boy, now that is what you call hair pulling. I saw that hair pulling. I saw it, Bobby. Better worry about that other man there, not Harry Thornton. I can't help but blame Jojo Yamamoto for getting eaten on the wrong path. I've never been quite as disappointed in anybody in wrestling as I have this young man, I, I was so glad when he seemed to get back on the straight path, but Tojo got hold of him and got him back in his clutches, and now he's in with that unholy outfit. Now in comes Tony Perkins, and Eaton backs away from him. Perkins now going after the great Togo. Back to Eaton, puts him down. There's one that puts the Japanese wrestler down. Oh, look at that. Bobby Eaton tried a drop kick on him. Didn't do much good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Right into the knee of the great Togo. In his eyes, look at that. Now that is a very bad move. I, I would like to see that outlawed in all of wrestling. I think a possible injury to a man's eyes is, is just no place for it. Same thing right there, going for his eye. Bobby Eaton is taking uh, care of Ellis while the referee is occupied by the great Togo. Togo got the ref. He can't talk much English, but he got him tied up for a minute. Watch this. Oh, look out. Here comes Eaton. Gary Ellis slowly getting to his feet. Now, I saw that. Not Rocky Brewer either. Eaton looked over here and said, there's your Rocky Brewer. I said, no, that's not Rocky Brewer at all. Good, good young man, but not Rocky Brewer. Look at that. Both men working on him. Boy. Bobby Eaton certainly knows what it's all about. I won't uh, hesitate to give him credit, even though he's on the wrong side of wrestling as far as I'm concerned. I won't hesitate to give him credit for his ability, and he has plenty of it. In fact, he has so much, it's a shame to see the young man waste it on Tojo Yamamoto and his type of wrestlers. When he has so much ability and could be such a, a fine young wrestler. But apparently money means more to him than anything else. Some people are like that. Ellis slowly getting up. He's up on the ring roll for starts up. Eaton reached across. You've got to give the man time to get in the ring. Goes right to work on Ellis. Ellis fighting back. Calls for Togo to come in. And Ellis is on the floor. Now both men, look at that. Both men, he's not Togo. Helping Togo. Well, it's actually, he's almost helpless. Trying to get over and make the tag. You saw him reach out, but he couldn't get to Johnny Perkins. Togo in between, cut him off. Will not let him move to his corner. Perkins waiting. But they don't want Ellis to get a tag out. They know that he has soaked up a lot of punishment. They're trying to wrap it up right here by getting him so run down that they can tag him. And they may just do it. It's good strategy. It's a good move. If they can keep him away from his corner. Uh-oh. Did he get the tag? No, he did not. He was close enough, but they simply missed each other. <coughs> a tough break. They were close enough to make the tag. But they just missed hitting each other's hands. I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to hold off. Look at this. Look at this. Boy. Now Eaton is going to come in. Trying to wrap it up. And they may have it. One, two, three. That's it. Bobby Eaton, the winner, or whether getting a winning ball over Gary Ellis. Tony Perkins was stopped by the great Togo as he tried to come in and help. But... There they are, Eaton and uh, Togo bowing to each other in true Japanese style. Nick Goulas telling him to get out of the ring and don't make any move toward getting after that young man. Well, wait, just wait. You'll get... Or what's going to happen to Rocky Brewer and his partner every time he gets to the ring with a Japanese connection? Okay. We'll take a little break here, fans, and be right back with you. Welcome back to... GWH TV. Once again, I am Brother Joe. Alongside me, Brother John, and alongside Brother John, Brother Stevie J. Now, folks at home, I make no bones about it. My favorite time period in professional wrestling has got to be the 1980s, and I know that you gentlemen must certainly feel the same. I got a mullet for Christ's sake. And you know, <laughs> you know what else I love just as much as professional wrestling? I love old Western movies. Well, you know, the good part about wrestling in the 80s, there were definitely a lot of cowboys. Yeah, and, and it's a shame that John Wayne never guest-hosted Starcade. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, before movies like The Young Guns and before Barry Windham joined the legendary Four Horsemen, there was Black Jack Mulligan Jr., son of the legendary Black Jack Mulligan. Senior. Bet you guys didn't see that one coming. Ho -ho. And now... We take you to 1981, where Barry Windham, known then as Black Jack Mulligan Jr., faces off against Cowboy Young. 
Let's go to the ring. One fall, 15 minute time limit. Your official Don Williams. First, let me introduce to you from Eagle Pass, Texas, 242 pounds, Jack Mulligan Jr. And his opponent at 218 pounds from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Cowboy Young. One fall, 15 minute time limit. And there's your bell. Joining me here at our microphone, uh, Izzy Slavowitz, the manager of Vine Swords and Candy. And you've got a keen eye on this Jack Mulligan Jr. That's right. That's right, Liz Thatcher. Uh, Ray Candy's out in the studio now, is he? Uh, we're not going to have uh, a unique performance of what happened on the program before. He's just, he's just watching this Mulligan Jr. there, watching how he wrestles. I'm just asking him to take a seat and watch. I think that would be... Uh, yeah, all he's doing is watching his, his, his opponent there. Everybody does that. He wants to see how many times Jack Mulligan Jr. cheats to try and win. But you know something? I think this Cowboy Young can beat him. Cowboy Young caught him with an elbow, spun him around, dropped him. But, and a slam now by Young. Almost, but uh, oi, oi. Able, to, able to spin over, come down his side and break the fall. Hey, is me. You know, the guy is tough, dude. Good balance on Mulligan's part. You very seldom see a man be able to turn himself on a slam like that. Wait, you that see that there? Punch, the that diving punch, the diving There's a little punch. Of him, and I'm in a close fist there. This is strictly there what they say in my country, illegal extension. A knee drop by Mulligan and a two count. Cowboy Young. Did you see him pulling the guy's tights? No, I didn't see that, is he? I'm so missed it. Well, I saw it. Believe you me, I wouldn't like to. Cowboy Young. Couple kicks in the midsection by Jack Mulligan Jr. and an uppercut. You know, it's funny, Les Dutch, if that was Lake Candy, you would probably say kicks below the belt there. Uh, but uh, Jack well, Mulligan Jr., you call it there the midsection there. Well, if he had kicked him below the belt, I would have mentioned that. Yeah, too. I don't know. Look below there to me. A good slam by Jack Mulligan Jr. and uh, Candy. Well, I don't know. Candy the harassing. Forget yeah. about Candy harassing him. Look at him with the hair. He's pulling his hair there. All Candy's doing is sort of like observing there, you know. Oh, I just feel it should be a, observing from a distance, though, is it? Mulligan in control right now, offensively. Ah, a small package by Cowboy Young, but Mulligan able to bail out, and I believe the junior's got to be paying too more attention to Ray Candy and should be paying more attention to Cowboy Young. That forearm down across the back by Jack Jr., the flying mare. Mulligan goes to the ropes. Waiting for Young to start up. Hits him with a tackle. And a right hand by Mulligan once again. And another one. Pops Cowboy Young. Look at him. Look at him. See, he's got his tights there, Liz Thatcher. Body slam. I, I didn't see him get the tights. You see, I, yeah, I saw well, I saw it. Believe me, I saw it. I know that people out there saw it too. Junior misses the knee. Junior misses the knee. And Young having a chance here to go by Junior right back in there. And Izzy, the young man is today. Mayday! He <laughs> pulls down that top rope and off the tackle. <laughs> Mulligan over the top. Did, did not see it coming, and down he went. He's on top, he went over the top. Oh, look at that, what a clutch. <laughs> look and at Jack look Mulligan at Jr. is counted out. <laughs> Cowboy Young is his hand raised. Liz Thatcher, you couldn't even be Cowboy Young. The reason, the reason though, is he was your man pulled that top rope down <laughs> and made Mulligan off balance <laughs> and got him for that reason. Go right over the top. Jack Mulligan... Ray Candy and Izzy Slavowitz both trying to stay out of the way of Jack Mulligan Jr. Jr. Uh, I know what no, that's never that's, happened to me. I saw exactly he pulled the ropes down. I don't know if the referee saw the referee gave the match to the other guy. Candy, anytime, anywhere, baby. Oh, uh, good. Very upset, uh, Jack Mulligan Jr. He lost the match uh, on account of, of course, not his own fault as you witnessed. It was the to do Izzy Slavowitz. And there you see it as Candy pulls down that top rope. Mulligan hits the deck and writhing in pain on the floor is counted out. Your winner was Cowboy Young, a very controversial decision. We'll be back with in-depth.
And now it's the time you've all been waiting for the main event. We are going back to 1981 once again, where Georgia heavyweight champion wildfire Tommy Rich defends the title against Olympic strongman Ken Patera. Let's go to the ring. Yeah. Fail. Ken Patera breaks the count. Count is on once again. And as Patera comes partially through the rope, it's Tommy Rich right on top of him. Tommy Rich meeting out all of the punishment he can. And Patera in trouble. Tommy Rich now continues to pummel and beat away at uh, Ken Patera. Tommy Rich totally in command of the situation at this point in the match. The referee warning Rich to move away, move back, which is understandable. All right, it's Rich now meeting out all of the punishment that he possibly can on Ken Patera. Patera, the challenger in this Georgia heavyweight championship match. Rich comes off the second rope, catches him in the lower lumbar region. And uh, it is Rich creating a lot of devastation now on Ken Patera. Once again, comes back across the lower spine into a lateral press. Ah, Patera, a foot on the ropes, a foot on the ropes. Referee calls for the break, but Patera is coming up very slowly. Those lower discs have to be uh, malaligned at this point, but it is uh, Patera catching him very nicely with a forearm. Drove a boot right over the heart of Ken Patera. Catches him with a stinging right hand. Patera hanging onto those ropes now. Rich catches him again and again. And once again, Ken Patera leaves the ring. Tommy Rich outside the ring after him. to the table and it is uh, Ken Patera catching him with a chair and so now we've gotten completely outside the rules and regulations but Patera is back in the ring Patera is back in the ring Tommy Rich shaking his head being offered assistance outside the ring the count is on looks like four no sir the count is broken the count is broken by uh, Ken Patera. And Patera misses with a wild right hand. Rich outside the ring ropes. Rich outside the ring ropes, but he has the sleeper. And his forearm coming down across the carotid artery. And that's going to... And he broke it in time. I believe he broke it in time. Patera trying to get to his feet. Tommy Rich closing in on him once again. to break the hold. And that would not, by the way, qualify for the uh, breaking of the swinging uh, four nozzle. Off the rope, Rich in trouble, back away. Rich gets it in the paper. Rich has it in his paper. He's riding in straddle right now. He's riding in straddle. He's got the paper hold in Ken Patera. The world's strongest professional wrestler in a lot of trouble here. Off the rope, and he gets it back in the paper once again. Patera. Are into the ropes again. Patera, the great 
enforced by the referee. Fires one to the midsection of Tommy Ricks. Whips him off the rope. Both men collide. Both men collide. And it's a question now as a dual count is in progress. A dual count is in progress. And it's, a, it's broken now as Tommy Ricks and Ken Patera exchanging hard, hard right hand. Belly to back to play by Ken Patera. Into a lateral press. What a main event. Did you guys enjoy that match or oh, what? Man. <laughs> I I personally think that uh, Wildfire got robbed by the Olympic strongman, Ken Patera. Yeah. Travesty. In Travesty. fact, I, th I think they probably should have stripped Patera of all his medals for unsportsmanlike conduct in the professional wrestling world. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, really curious if maybe somebody from Connecticut had something to do with the, the end of that match. Those darn Connecticutuckins or whatever. And on that note, we encourage you to check us out next episode next week for Brother Stevie J, for Brother John Cannon, I am Brother Joe, and we'll see you next time at the matches. Hey, this is Joe with the Nosebleed Section. I'm here with one half of the Midnight Express. Beautiful Bobby Eaton. Want to say that, Joe, the Nosebleed Section? Hey, Bobby Eaton took on Ricky Morton tonight here at Galaxy Pro Wrestling, and unfortunately, you came up on yeah, the... Yeah, well, uh, you know I'm under doctor's orders. You know, I wasn't really supposed to wrestle. I come down here to these people who don't respect me. I do. You, go, you do? Yes. Thank you, Joe. John does. John, do you? For yes. real? He's not lying to you, sir. You know, I'm been nice to me. I may get you some seats at ringside. Uh, well, we kind of prefer to sit up in Nosebleed. the nosebleed. That's our I don't blame you. It's the game of our show. No, okay. Yeah. What show is it now? It's the nosebleed section. The nosebleed section. Yeah, and you know, we actually had your former partner, Loverboy Dennis Condry, call in two weeks ago mm -hmm. and uh, gave us one of the most insightful interviews we've ever had. And we even found out that Condry goes commando. Oh, yeah, he does. I've seen him like a bunch of times. You know, yeah. Hotels. Edit that out, right? No, no. You didn't. Only. Yes, sir. I got something on him. Okay, cool. But uh, yeah, we're glad you're feeling better. We heard that you're in the hospital. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, Bob, our, yeah, Bobby, we there's a question we ask all our guests. Uh, we want one memory of the Monkey Brothers. Monkey Brothers, two of the toughest guys I've ever seen in my life. Heck yeah. You know, they shoot them out of a daggum parachute or a daggum <laughs> cannonball. You know, yeah, those guys are tough guys. They got over, got over people. The fans of the WCW, well, they're, NWA. Yeah, they're like the Coyote, man. You can get, run them over, blow them up, and they'll yeah, still keep exactly. coming back for more. Well, uh, Bobby, we're glad that you're feeling better. Thank and, you very uh, much, Joe. It was an honor to talk to you tonight. All right, man. So All you right. don't want no seats at ringside? Um, no, thank you. All right, we'll get Dennis run through the ringside next. Right. Tell Jim we said hello. Well, All right, right, man. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Tommy Rich going up against Mike Jackson. One fall, 10-minute time limit. Mike Jackson in the red and blue trunks. Tommy Rich in the light blue trunks. Jackson up and over his man. And a beautiful move by Jackson. A good counter as he moved in. Tommy Rich broke it up, however. Both men super fast. And both men shaking hands. A fine display of sportsmanship thus far. Obviously, a great deal of mutual respect. Take down by uh, Jackson. Broken up by Rich once again. Jackson, the slightly lighter of the two, but very fast, very aggressive, has his master's degree. Uh, he is uh, in teaching as well as uh, wrestling. And the chant being picked up, Tommy Ritz, obviously uh, a great favorite here. Good move by Jackson into a rollover and a uh, arm drag takedown. Rich broke it up, got it into a head scissors. Jackson breaks free. Tommy Rich.
Tommy Rich very quickly floats up. Good reversal now by Mike Jackson. Mike Jackson tried to move in there into the rope. Outstanding match right now. Again, both men back on their feet. Exceptionally fast. Arm drag takedown by Jackson. Tommy Rich goes into a head scissors. Beautifully locked in. Right at the hollow of the knee. And so Rich, apparently now changing his strategy, deciding that the best thing to do is to slow Jackson down. Now uh, interfering uh, with his breathing. Getting the pressure to either side of the neck. Now Jackson has his problems. Once you start depleting the flow of oxygen to the brain, uh, the brain slows down as well as the body. Jackson, head stands out. Both men observing the rules and regulations, and so the referee has a fairly easy time of it here. Marty Mom! Uh, hits us, and it is uh, Rich on collateral press, but uh, Jackson powers out. To a hip lock takedown by Rich. No! And Rich now keeps that pressure on again. You notice now he's concentrating on the head, the neck, and the breathing of Mike Jackson. Again, in my opinion, steadily trying to uh, wear him down. Cut down that speed maneuverability. Off the ropes, he catches him in the uh, section, and a good hip lock takedown once again by Rich. Jackson uh, using the elbow to the midsection, the rib cage of Tommy Wildfire Rich. Fired him off. Hip toss by Jackson, and Jackson now opening up. Beautiful rolling reverse by Tommy Wildfire Rich, but uh, both men spring out of it. And again, good display of sportsmanship here. Another hip lock takedown by Mike Jackson. Back on their feet. Good duck under, go behind, high waist lift takedown by Tommy Wildfire Rich. Almost a frog ride, but it is. Uh, the both men into the ropes, and so the referee again calls for the break. Both men break cleanly. Both men back on their feet. Collar and elbow once again. And Jackson goes to the side, headlock. Rich tried to break free. Jackson went down now. Jackson fired off. Rich catches him coming in. Ah, beautiful uh, body slam. Jackson catches him with a flat of both feet into an arm drag takedown. Classic match between these two, and Jackson again caught in that uh, head scissors, and so it is uh, Tommy Wildfire Rich again going back to the head, going back to the neck, the throat, and the lungs. Again, Jackson turns into his man, drives forward. Watching those shoulders of Tommy Rich. <laughs> Rich is able to roll him out once again. Jackson breaks free and uh, they're into the ropes. Hip 
Headlock takedown once again by uh, Jackson. Both men back on their feet. This time it's Tommy Wildfire Rich, and Jackson gets the head scissors as uh, Wildfire Rich breaks free from her once again. Jackson comes off the ropes as Wildfire gets him. Beautiful move as Jackson held on. Jackson coming off those ropes. Tommy Wildfire Rich drops down. Jackson drops to the canvas. Leapfrogs up and over his man. And wow, as he caught him, he tried. Beautiful move. Beautiful move. Tommy Wildfire Rich caught him with that vertical body block. And uh, Jackson checking to make sure it was a count of three. And... Uh...